you gradually build up an eye for plants. That plant, the flower is quite black. It bears the name of a dear friend that died, Pleurostima pichettiana. And that is the second plant that I want to show. It is uh, a, a Meliantera, Burle Maxi. It's a rock plant that I discovered in Spiritu Santo. Fantastic region with mountains and beautiful rock plants. And that is another, another Velociatia here that uh, we discussed not very far from here. It is amazing that one hour from here I can discover new plants. And on account of that, I have over 30 plants that bears my name. I don't believe that there are any other gardens with a similar collection of these plants anywhere. Certainly not a Velociaceae. It must be unique in the world, I should think. It's a vegetation called Campo Repestri, which just basically means rocky fields. Um, this is very, very rich, and Roberto has, uh, has collected a lot in this, in this kind of vegetation. It's an area that's been suffering quite a lot of depredation, particularly from orchid hunters and cactus hunters and bromeliad hunters too. Bromeliads do have these nice sculptural shapes and you can also get them to grow in all sorts of funny kind of places up walls and on top of walls or on columns and that kind of thing. So they lend themselves to all sorts of original ideas about how to to place plants on buildings or in gardens of various kinds. <laughs> In the case of the Aeraceae, things like Philodendron, Anthurium, Swiss cheese plant, that kind of thing, he's got a collection which must number, I should say, six to eight hundred species, something of that order, which is a very substantial collection indeed. They're all rainforest plants, these, so that gives his collection an added importance, of course. As he's interested in plants from their aesthetic point of view, he's tended to concentrate on groups that the lay person would also react to and respond to because they are conspicuous, because they're beautiful, because you can do things with them in gardens. So that adds the whole extra appeal, really. That is a plant that in the botanical garden really they don't have. It is rare and uh, it is good as a garden plant, very beautiful. That's the philodendron. Um, and in my collection, we have over 500 different species. So uh, the more I know, uh, the, um, the better I can use uh, the plants. I think that, that Roberto latched onto philodendrons primarily because of their sculptural forms as whole plants. Um, there is a group of philodendrons which have this wonderful tree-like form. And these plants uh, are very apt for landscape design. Each plant has a character. It depends how you combine. Uh, in certain cases, for instance, that blackish uh, velvety uh, leaf, if I would put a white near that plant uh, that would be like a glass, I would obtain a fantastic effect. And I think, uh, I think in, uh, in such terms that I'm creating not only the garden, but also the paintings. Position, but it is also an opening in a valley, and uh, I wanted very much uh, give clearness to the composition because the, the whole surroundings are natural landscape. I wanted to establish a strong contrast. The garden is a continuity of the house. So why not have a rectangular composition? I think it goes together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Here used to be the greatest coffee plantations in the first land in Brazil. This house belonged to a French plantation man called Jean-Francois Le Sen that came around 1850 to Brazil. The actual house was destroyed. This was a little garden house and we restored it. There was just a little and we wanted a swimming pool for the children, so we better made a little barrage there. And the water is so pure you can drink on it. They have a pool of water that comes from the mountain. Why not to use all the water and the background of the, the pool with stones? It's uh, so beautiful. It gives me the impression I am uh, in a river in a forest. I won't touch the jungle, the nature. I will do just the center of the valley and I'll leave everything untouched. And don't you dare touch anything that I put here. I use the palms quite as sculptures, but also in grooves to stress the character of the palms uh, in the, that very big lawn that you have but always groups that are linking the garden, as you can see from different angles. Roberto brought many specimens from the Indian sea to adapt in Brazil, and they all grew beautifully here. Lovely. What about this, this little tree here? Do you know much about this that? This is what's, a what's typical growing? tree called Quaresma. And what is it that, that are growing on it? I mean, these have all been established. Oh, orchids, dendrobrions. These are dendrobrions. And Roberto told me always to put the same color in the tree, either white or yellow or pink. He doesn't like many mixture of specimens. He likes big groups of the same kind of specimens. He always tell me, never make salads out of gardens. <laughs> it is always a fight. Uh, an artist must fight with the angel. And after creating a garden for people, I have the right to, to drink a good champagne. I'm always afraid of stopping. On account of that, I want to live with my friends, speaking about art, uh, eating together, drinking together. Then you have the pleasure of living. I, I have uh, become a landscape architect. I do very much to my friend, Lucio Costa, who, living in the same uh, street, he helped me very much of understanding problems of art and problems of construction. I think it was during my life I couldn't have had a better friend or organizing, orientating my life towards landscape architecture. In 
linda pra você. This unique, unique is a, an exception. It's a miracle that in Brazil we can contribute to such a man and such a work of uh, widespread uh, significance. <laughs> seems to have been a dream in Brazil to create a new ideal capital away from Sao Paulo and Rio and the old historic centers. Uh, and so in the late 1950s, the government decided to actually create a new capital, Brasilia. Lucho uh, Costa uh, conceived of the idea. He was sort of the uh, architect in charge uh, in collaboration with Oscar Niemeyer, a great international architect who played such an important role in establishing the whole look of Brasilia. And it wasn't until five years after the work had gotten underway that Burley Marx was asked to participate in this. Uh, he then was given, I believe, five or six uh, major projects which were carried out. I believe the Ministry of the Army project there is is one of the most interesting. It looks a bit threadbare and worn, but it has a certain beauty even in that uh, condition. I find it uh, quite isolated emotionally and psychologically from the uh, Ministry of the Army background. You look away from that building, you're drawn into it by this basin, this great expanse of water that reflects the extraordinary cloud display that you always seem to see in Brasilia. And uh, having that water in the middle of it again, the water garden, always this theme throughout early Marx's work. Uh, in the middle of it are these crystalline concrete forms. It also uh, conveys a kind of wilderness feeling, which Brasilia was originally before this capital was plunked down there some 30 years ago. In the use of trees, it almost has an African tundra look to it. The Foreign Affairs Building, to my eye, looks quite dated as an expression of architecture. But Burley Marx has managed to give it an interest through the interplay of water and plants in and around the building itself. flows in and out through arches, almost like the entrance to a Venetian palace. And uh, he's used uh, enormous scaled philodendron, another native plant material there.
can express yourself in your work, I'm glad that I can do. But as a French thinker says, it is always completing a thought that will be never completed. I think uh, what is important for an artist, not that he is only a landscape architect or a painter, he needs to know what is happening, what surrounds him. First thing that struck me about President de Bargain Grande was the beautiful lines of the whitewashed house itself in its red tile roofs. In front of it, Freddie Marx had lined up a wonderful alley of Caribbean royal palms that really made an extension of the architecture itself. The Fazenda Vargam Grande certainly is in the grand tradition of the private garden of the Renaissance. I would certainly put it in that category. The water, which has always come in from the mountains there, has been transformed into a series of basins uh, that flow down on each of these terraces. And I'd say the centerpiece is the Great Cascade. It must be some 12 or 15 feet high, runs over a series of levels, very complicated piece of work. I tried to sketch it one day and could hardly figure out all of the different planes and levels the water comes over. Having the water that comes from the mountain, it would be a terrible if I wouldn't lose the water first as reflecting element, second as creating with the water liquid, liquid sculpture. And then the water is for vivifying the water plant. No garden is natural. And it seems to me that the whole summation of that idea is in uh, the Fazenda Bargam Grande. Off to one side, it has a very nice touch for a water garden. It has a dry garden that he deliberately has juxtaposed in the middle of it, bromeliads and rocks and so on. Quite surprising when you see it there after concentrating on all of the water plants in the upper levels. I use the stones, and not only the stones, but the rock plants that are uh, uh, existing in that region. And this gives me the impression that I'm linking that part of the garden towards the existing landscape. It is very important to understand that uh, you have beautiful rock plants in Brazil, and why not using them in the garden? Each plant has a way of blooming, a way of living, the way of growing in contact with animals or with the insects. But if I understand uh, all that linking, then a garden begins to have a deeper quality. I asked him what element he thought was the most important. And he said to me that day that he thought light might be the most important element that a landscape architect had to deal with. And that was the last element in the world that I would have thought of or that I ever heard any other garden designer or, or artist express. Certainly, the light in that garden during the day is what you are seeing here. But in a, a somber day with clouds, it would have a different character. But through illumination today, you can create a marvelous theater in the garden. At night, you will have here a marvelous concert with the frogs and animals that are living here. The frogs here have very strange voices, sometimes as baritone and sometimes like a caruso. They can sing in beautiful ways. <laughs> 